About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelled the smoke. And I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters, all died. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Rafaela laughed. For the first time since the bombs had fallen, I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there, until, until Rafaela. She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at her camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. The story of Mexico and Fallout is one of a series of unfortunate events that leads me to believe this nation had a terrible luck stat. The events occur on a national and personal scale from the pre-war to the post-war. The world of Fallout has its origins deeply tied to the American Southwest, which has unsurprisingly led to the mention or involvement of Mexico in some way over the years, often in the form of NPCs and mention of the remains of Mexico. To get to the core of the idea of Mexico and the story of Fallout, we have to go back to the times before the bombs fell and Mexico was still a nation. To begin Mexico's series of unfortunate events, disaster strikes when a devastating earthquake hits their capital, Mexico City, in the year 2042. To put that into perspective, because who cares about the year just for the sake of saying the year, the bombs fall in 2077, putting us 35 years out from the apocalypse. This is likely a universe parallel or reference to the actual 1985 Mexico City earthquake, which occurred 200 miles away from the city on the Pacific coast. The city sits upon a drained lake bed, causing it to be particularly susceptible to the damage caused by an earthquake. It did not help that this was a magnitude 8 earthquake, with the largest ever being recorded at 9.5. In 1985, over 400 buildings collapsed with thousands more damaged, electricity going out in the city, phones rendered inoperable, traffic lights non-functional, and a government that was refusing to deploy an emergency plan. The final death toll was estimated at a grim 10,000. Other estimates and speculation object to that number, assuming it was much higher. Tens of thousands more required medical treatment that was difficult to come by due to the vast damage done to the buildings. This included medical facilities, of course. Beyond this, there was an estimated 250,000 people left homeless and without shelter. We can only assume the numbers that would have occurred in the Fallout universe's version of this terrible event, but one could imagine Mexico City by 2042 would be much larger in terms of population and infrastructure, meaning more people and buildings in a denser area. I'll leave it at that. In response to this, Corporation General Atomics, who produces the Mr. Handy robots, saw this as a prime business opportunity and made their bot the most popular thing in Mexico as it was able to help them clean up their city from the destruction of the earthquake. Sales went through the roof. By the way, General Atomics had partnerships with Robco Industries and the United States Armed Forces. Who knows if that will become relevant again. Anyways, 
Just nine years later, in 2051, we see the beginning of what is often referred to as the Resource Wars, which is essentially when the hourglass is turned over for the world of pre-war fallout. This is when wars start breaking out left and right between Europe and the Middle East, and furthermore, US versus China, but this predates those extremities just a bit, as the US needed the oil to keep flowing in from Mexico, but Mexico did not have enough to spare. Mexico was an easy target for the US, who brutalized them with sanctions, much like they use as a weapon today. They essentially pulled strings and made moves from a distance that began to wreck Mexico internally. They then used that instability as an excuse to invade them on some sort of moral grounds as the world police and friendly neighbors. In reality, they were a parasite sucking the blood out of a struggling nation, one that was struggling especially so on their behalf. Now, this is not an annexation. The military goes in, captures the oil refineries, and keeps the oil coming into the US. On the world stage, the US is not incorporating Mexico and its states into itself. It simply invades and maintains control over one strategic aspect of their infrastructure. On the other hand, Canada would be annexed and they would start to be incorporated into the greater United States, a topic for another time perhaps. The invasion would bear little fruit for the US, and a documentary would be released showing Texan oil fields suck to the bone, dry and empty with dormant pump jacks gathering no oil. Imagine this kind of documentary releasing in a time of speculation and rising prices for civilians. You can imagine politicians downplaying the issue, calling articles discussing the topic hyperbolic shock pieces meant to manufacture fear. Then from out of nowhere, this documentary releases from footage captured in restricted lands that look alien because of how manipulated and mistreated they have been. Due to the lack of oil left in Texas and otherwise, large American oil companies, mostly Poseidon Energy, gripped tightly onto the remains in Mexico. The corporation of Poseidon controlled the Chicontepec oil fields, which led to the naming of the child company under Poseidon Energy, Petro Chico, which means gasoline boy in English. The branding labeled it as Petro Chico, un amigo de Poseidon Energy, gasoline boy, a friend of Poseidon Energy. How fitting is it that the company that is coming in and stealing from the land of Mexico and taking back to the United States brands themselves with a child, a young Mexican boy, and calls that Mexican boy a friend to the parent company. It's a very interesting display of corporate propaganda on the Mexican people in the pre-war time of fallout. Some of the United States and their company's wrongdoings were reported on by journalists within Mexico. However, one of the more popular articles throughout Latin America was one of an interview with a woman who claimed to be one of Robert House's girls. She said he scanned her brain and dressed her up to make an artificial intelligence based on her. Weird thing to claim, no way. I think the idea behind this detail which is given to the courier from Raul is meant to display what the Mexican public might have thought of the rich and powerful in the US and the fascination with someone like Mr. House. Of course, forcibly making an AI out of his lover is interesting to almost anyone, but imagine what the people of Mexico thought, having been invaded by the US and living in its cascading shadow as world power struggles grew more common. Earthquakes, invasions, lessening resources and panic, yet in all the chaos there's this guy scanning brains and living in a totally different world. It was probably cathartic to make fun of him or criticize the excess and absurdity of it, but it was also probably a form of escapism from the stressful realities around them. Unfortunately, on October 23rd, 2077, much like the United States, Mexico was hit with a giant dose of heavy bombing, with Mexico City succumbing to some of the worst Mexico would receive. Despite surviving earthquakes before, the city would be left in radioactive ruin, and the country would be left in lawless chaos and disarray. Mexico was not hit as badly as the US, but it was also not known to have had any vaults from vault Tech or otherwise. Raider groups would form, and many Mexicans would flee into the former United States. I am sure they saw varying degrees of success, considering they were running from one wasteland into another. If you thought Mexico's problems would stop after the Great War and collapse of society, think again. Mexico has another chapter in its series of unfortunate events where Mexico's western beaches would become soaked in toxic radioactive waste that led not only to severe ecological damage that earthquakes and nukes hadn't already caused, but also began mutating the sea life left in the area. What caused this, you might ask? Well, it was the result of repeated waste dumps from Control Station Enclave that would drift down the Pacific coast of California into Mexico's beaches. The Enclave is the remnants of the United States government, so it seems Mexico's issues keep coming from the same source over and over and over again. 
There have also been tales out of Mexico that Night Stalkers and Bighorners have made their way there, but one could imagine if the series ever gets an official entry, they would have much more in the way of wildlife to explore. The Sonoran Desert, an enormous desert that spans across the US and Mexico, near the Mojave Desert, was going to be home to a creature known as the Desert Stalker, which is a mutated version of the real-life antlion. The Desert Stalker would burrow up from the ground and drag its prey back down into the earth, a terrifying and suffocating thought. They would also target the weakest of the group first in a systematic breakdown of their prey. This was a part of the cancelled Fallout 3 Van Buren. We also get mention of the real-world Mexican states of Veracruz, Hidalgo, and Puebla. Petro Chico slash Poseidon Energy operated in those states, so if we ever get to go to Mexico and Fallout, we can expect to see the remnants of the American corporations in regions like these. And finally wrapping up the series of unfortunate events for Mexico, there's the tragedy of the Tejada family ranch near the town of Hidalgo, Mexico. Hidalgo is actually a state in Mexico as stated that sits to the northeast of Mexico City, so presumably they were far enough away at this ranch to avoid the devastation suffered there. Raul and his family were on the ranch when many refugees began showing up, largely from Mexico City. They offered supplies at first, but then began to risk running out of food for themselves, so Raul and his father had to arm themselves and demand that the refugees seek refuge elsewhere. The consequence for this action would backfire horrendously, as a group would return in the night and set the ranch home on fire, killing all of Raul's family aside for himself and his little sister. This left his mother, father, grandmother, three brothers, and two sisters who would all die that night. They survived an apocalypse but just a few bitter souls changed that when they decided that because they could not have the food, no one could. And the Tejada family ranch becomes one more location in Fallout lost to time and war, with Raul and his little sister Rafaela left to wander and survive. I am sure some of you are thinking now, wait, what about Baja? You gotta talk about the Mountain Dew. I have a separate video on that and I'll leave a link below if you're interested. There's a very distinct story and set of mysteries for that particular region being Baja, California. Upon review, we can see, like many stories in Fallout, Mexico has a brutal series of events occur upon the country, among corrupt governments and corporations, war, crime, and natural disasters, but the characters we meet from there, namely Raul Tejeda, emit an incredible sense of resilience. I know some fans want Fallout to stay in the United States, but I would love for a Fallout game to take place in Mexico. There's so much to draw from and we can see there's a great base of lore and foundation despite never going there in an official game. I'm aware of the mod for Fallout 2 called Fallout Sonora based on the Sonora Desert we talked about earlier, and hopefully one day I'll get a chance to play it. Let me know what you think of it and if you've gotten a chance to play it. There's also the mod for New Vegas called Nuevo Mexico that's in production currently, and it seems that Mexico City will be a featured location among several other hubs. Anyways, that's all I have for you on Mexico and Fallout. If you know anything that I didn't say, feel free to drop it below. Thanks for watching, and I'm so glad I don't live where earthquakes happen. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always just handsome. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than kill him. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name was Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets. And I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. I hoped they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams, and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. <laughs>